Welcome to Danny Houlihan's Irish Experience Podcast. Join Danny on a journey through the historical island of Ireland, its people and the wild Atlantic Way, which is Ireland's last frontier. Experience the music and the culture that makes up the longest coastal driving route in the world. Now, please welcome your host, Danny Houlihan. Curran Fata, good evening on Atlantic Ian. A studio vol of winning own, win own the Shonana Kunde Kiri. Welcome to the Wild Atlantic Way here on the southwest coast of Ireland and Danny Houlihan's Irish experience. If you have just joined my show, my name is Danny Houlihan. I'm a historian, author, piper, and podcaster. During my years of extensive research into the heartland of the ancient kingdom of Kier, I have visited many places. What stands out time and time again is his heritage, both written and its built heritage, and of course our native ancestors, who constructed these ancient structures, a unique part of our island, known internationally as Ireland. Our Irish people left a mark on our landscape and our culture for future generations, a legacy of their ultimate art. I travel out once more on one of the arteries of the famous Wild Atlantic Way route, which is one of the world's longest coastal driving routes, which stretches from Donegal in the north to Cork in the south, punctuated with world-famous views that would take your breath away. Inward I travel from my Bala of Winnenown studio to explore more of the hidden parts of our country's rich built heritage. On the outskirts of the famous village of Abbey Dorney, a few miles from Tralee, there is located, shrouded in history, the impressive ruins of a Cistercian Abbey, which was founded, according to historians, in the year of 1154, and dedicated to St. Bernard, the famous Curialison Abbey of Abbey Dorney. The historic abbey was constructed on the lands of the Ithorna, a sept of the famous Curia, who were the custodians of the landscape of ancient Erin, going way back into the mists of early history until the arrival of the Normans in 1166 and the subsequent Cromwellian invasion with the loss of our culture which heralded the end of our famous Irish language. As I walked towards the ruins of Abbey Dorney from the main road, approaching this beautiful scenic ruin of Ciarlaisen Abbey, which today is surrounded by a graveyard containing many famous tombs and graves of its past and its locals, I am struck by the impressive position and elevation of the landscape of Avidorni. No doubt that when the famous Cistercian Abbey was in full use, it was like most others in Ireland, surrounded by a dense covering of trees, now fell by years of subsequent invasion and land reclamation. All that survives of the ruins is that of a church, which was constructed using sandstone and limestone quarried locally. Lime and mortar was employed in the building of the church, like others in Kerry. Abbey Dorney, or in its Irish translation, is known in the Irish as Monastro Othona, the Monastery of the Othona. The old barony in which the ruin is located is in the old barony of Clan Murish, or Murish. Translating the name in English is Clan Morris, in the old civil parish of Monastro Othona, Abbey Dorney. The beautiful village of Abidoni takes its name in Irish from Monastor Othona, which was the Cistercian Order, established in 1154 as stated and sited north of the village. The famous ruins of Abidoni is often called Hyrilison, which is Greek for Lord have mercy. The abbots of Odorni, we read in the Annals of Ireland, were Lords of Parliament, thus indicating the importance of this religious building concerning church matters and the Holy See of the time. Christian O'Connorke, or O'Connorke, was born in the province of Ulster, in Northern Ireland, and studied there at St. Malachy's in Armagh. Christian departed Ireland after his education from Armagh and commenced his pilgrimage to Rome, and on his way he stayed at Clairvaux Abbey, a Cistercian monastery founded by St. Bernard. St. Bernard was a key reformer of the early Cistercian order, and would have still been alive at the time of Connorkey's visit. 
So while Christian was staying at Clairvaux, he was inducted into the order by St. Bernard. This, according to historian, was around the year of 1137. When Christian O'Connorkey returned to his native Ireland, he commenced the establishment of the first Cistercian monastery at a site now known today as Maliphant Abbey, at Drogheda, north of Dublin. St. Bernard sent several French monks to Maliphant to start the monastery. Christian, due to his holy works, became Bishop of Lismore in 1157, before retiring after his long years as a missionary to the sanctuary of Abbey Dorney in the year of 1180, to pray and prepare for his last journey to meet the Lord. It was here that he was to be buried with great ceremony within the ruins of Old Dorney in 1186, thus indicating the level of which the Abbey and its friars regarded him and that of the Holy See. T.J. Barrington, historian and author, in his famous book, Discovering Kerry, quote, Here died in 1186 Christian O'Connor, first abbot of Melifont, trained by St. Bernard of Clairvaux, who was later Bishop of Lismore, President of and Papal Legate at the Synod of Kells in 1152 and Synod of Cashel of 1171 to 1172, unquote. In the year of 1337, the famous abbey was granted to Edmund Lord Kerry, Baron of Ordone and Viscount Kilmoyley. The abbey was suppressed in 1536 during the reign of King Henry of England. After the Reformation, the abbey was granted to Captain Zouche, and after this period to the Crosby family, and again later to Trinity College in Dublin. As I walked through a side entrance to the church in the last few weeks, the remains of the West Gable window, which is fashioned from hard grey limestone with elaborate mouldings in Gothic style, is still there. Only a section remains, a throwback in time, a fragment of our past and this unique building. All around me there are sections and fragments of cut stones and objects, fashioned from limestone, integrated into old tombs and the presence of foundations, indicating the extent of the massive scale of the once imposing Cistercian Abbey, which dominated the North Kerry skyline. The doorway is unique with its ornate designs and mouldings, some of which are missing, but some are still visible today, standing testament to our ancestors. Access to this door is locked off now with a steel grid, but is visible. From this doorway, access was gained to the bell tower and roof of the famous abbey, which sadly today is in a dangerous condition. I noticed, while I was within the famous ruin, the floor level is overgrown and uneven, due to the fact that over the years, earth, masonry and other debris has accumulated within the confines of the once ornate church. This should be cleaned up for such an important abbey and its locals. It has been related that during the 15th century, one of the Fismorris family possibly was interred within the location of the church. However, no markings to date can verify this. What a pity. Right of this, where the altar was, is part of a sedilia. Now nearly gone, but the stone seat is there. A uniquely shaped waterfront in the shape of a shamrock and cross is there. Is this the final resting place of Bishop Conachy, the former Bishop of Lismore? Again, we can only speculate. He lies within this special place, a place of our Kiri ancestors, who were here before the Abbey and its building. Another part of this impressive building, which according to historians is dated to the 15th century, is the East Window, constructed of chiseled limestone, which I can see is divided into three lights or days by limestone mullions. The upper part of the window is of Gothic design. The building measures according to various surveys, 93 feet in length, with a width of 22 feet 9 inches. The walls are 39 inches in thickness, with a height of 22 feet. Walking around the ruined abbey, I can see there has been a small amount of preservation work carried out, with foundations and certain sections which have been pointed with lime-based mix to hold the structure in place. Unless more restoration work is done to this special ruin, it will fall. With it will be our history, gone, and our tourism potential for centuries gone. It's time to get the ruin sorted for future generations. 
The fact that there is a modern safety fence around the room is primarily for public safety, but it does take away from the experience of the place. This should be removed when the room is preserved fully. As I walk away from the Cistercian Abbey of Abidorney, I pause and reflect on the history and connection with Bishop Connorkey and his connection with the Holy See and the famous foundation which in ruins still captivates all who visit. I hope you have enjoyed our short visit to Abidorney, and when you visit North Kerry, Abidorney is a must. Abidorney today is a well-known farming community, steeped in its culture and sports, a place standing proud of its position in the history of Ireland. I will return in the future to Abidorney, so check out my podcast. In the meanwhile, if you like my podcast series, click on the like button. Please note that all my podcasts will be updated in the future, as dates which are written down in the past and heritage will be updated to reflect ongoing research. For the moment, Slán. Bye for now. Thanks for listening to our show. Through its people, its heritage and its rugged coastline, this is truly Danny Houlihan's Irish experience. Bye for now.